A common phenomenon that I've often seen in workflow forms is that, for example, after a test, you have two checkboxes, one for passed and the other one for not passed. And this is confusing for the user. Hi, my name is Andreas Hense and I make videos on business process automation. Today, I will talk about Boolean variables in workflow forms. First of all, what is a Boolean variable and who is Boole? Well, Boole was a mathematician in the 19th century and he is the father of the Boolean algebra. And the Boolean algebra is concerned with two values, true and false. And the Boolean algebra is also the basis of all binary digital systems and all computers that we use today. Because the one, the binary digit one, represents true and the binary digit zero represents false. Okay, so Boolean variables or variables in general in workflow forms. When you specify a workflow and you specify the data for a task, you have to say which types of variables you use in the workflow specification. And then modern business process automation systems can generate user elements from these data types. So for example, if you have the data type string, you would generate an input field for inputting characters. Or if you have a data type positive integer, you would have an input field where you can only input integer values or float values is another example. So one of these data types is the data type Boolean. So if you have a variable of type Boolean, for example, a variable named past, and this is of type Boolean, then the workflow management system will generate a checkbox for you in general. And the checkbox is an element, as you know, where you can just, set, you know, you can activate it and then the value is true. And if you don't activate it, the value is false. So the mistake I was talking about at the beginning is of using two checkboxes for a Boolean variable, especially using two checkboxes for the two possible answers. One is passed and one is not passed. And of course, this can lead to confusion if the user checks both checkboxes. So there are several solutions how to deal with this problem. The first one is to use radio buttons instead of checkboxes. So you can have a radio button for passed and a radio button for not passed. This is one possibility. The other possibility is to define an enumeration data type where you have a finite set of elements and you can say one element is called passed and the other one is called not passed. And then in the UI element, you only get to choose one of them. So you cannot choose both at the same time. And the third solution, which is my preferred solution, is to just use one Boolean variable and you just get one checkbox. And so in case, for example, I would call this variable passed and then you just choose this. And if you check the checkbox, it means it's passed. And if you don't check the checkbox, it's not passed. Well, I hope that this video was useful for you. Um, one interesting aspect of Boolean variables uh, not directly related to business process automation is the fact that you can store Boolean variables very efficiently because you only need one bit to store the value of a Boolean variable. And so you can store eight Boolean variables in one byte. And from what I know, this is the most efficient way of storing variables of all data types. Thank you for watching.